we're going to talk about how artists can change a place and using their own artwork. Uh, so I figured it'd be really fun to change my location of teaching to my own studio space. Yay! This is where I make my own artwork uh, for myself when I need to make artwork. Yeah! <laughs> cool! Um, so, uh, welcome to my studio space. This is some of the work I've been dabbling in and just playing around with. Um, but today, we're going to talk about artists and a lot of different art types of how artists will change places using art. Boom. Um, so there are going to be a lot of different styles we'll be looking at. There are a lot of different voices we'll be hearing because artists all have a different voice in what they're trying to say with their artwork or what they're trying to, or the ideas they're trying to show with their artwork. Um, and they'll also be very different in how they're completed. So there'll be different methods, different materials used to make these things. And even though they're different, they all can be linked together in some way. So when we start to, after watching these videos, turn to talk to the entire class to teach, you'll see that they're kind of interwoven in their own way. So even though artists have so many materials to choose from, they're limited in how they can really, really change a physical place. Um, they always emotionally, mentally change a lot of places with the art they're making, but like physically changing a place, they're kind of limited. Uh, when I was looking through things and I was like really kind of coming down to how do people change a place, there's really only two options. One, which would be cool, is destruction, destroying the walls, taking them down, knocking them down, completely like just crumbling everything down to the ground and restarting over and just constructing a brand new thing from nothing. Uh, or they take what they already have and they make it their own by adding splashes of color, adding artwork, creating artwork to go into a space. Uh, so we sadly only have that option. Uh, don't think we'd be allowed to kind of knock down walls and build a new school where the school is now. I just I don't think we're allowed to do that. Uh, we're not certified. We're not construction workers. We're not architects, at least not yet anyways. Um, I'm just an art teacher. And maybe down the road I'll become one, but today, not so much. So we'll be doing the other option, which is creating something to go into a space. And so we're going to have to look at a couple examples of how artists change that or change a place using their artwork. Um, so again, even though they're all going to be different types of art and be slightly different styles and different materials, in the end, all of the things we're looking at tie back to this idea of changing a place with art. In this video, I need you to do one super big important thing. I need you to take notes. It can be in your sketchbook or on the paper I will provide you with like, it's a kind of like a guideline for note taking uh, to answer or to technically write down five things. A definition for the art type you are looking at, the artist names you are looking at because there'll be beautiful images coming across the screen and you'll hear a beautiful voiceover done by me and names will pop up somewhere on the screen. Write it down. The artist's name. What material do they use? Like how do they make their artwork? Or would how do you think they make their artwork? Write down the artist or make a mark next to the artist you do like. I might do like you could do a circle, stars, a little checkpoint, whatever it is, just make a mark of the artists you do like and explain why you like them. Is it the color they used? Is it the topic they chose? Is it the material? I think I already said, did I already say that? I don't remember. I can't remember. And then last is how would you use the material, the artist to use for your project? Um, Because after we've all learned about all the awesome different ways artists can change a place you will be creating a project 
that changes a place. <laughs> Surprise! Um, and you'll be using one of the methods that we talked about. It'll be your choice, and we'll go even to more in depth about it later on. Just keep an open mind. Learn about the art that you need to learn about right now, and then we'll turn around to the class time, and we'll learn even more from your classmates. So this video is going to be talking about street art and graffiti. Uh, these two forms kind of come hand in hand in the sense that they both take place outside on the street, which is why it's called street art. Um, it is on buildings, it's on billboards, it's on trains, it's on the sidewalk, whatever it is, it's outside in the world for everyone to see. Street art has been approved. It has been asked by the artist to add these artworks onto it to create a statement piece, to create a poster to put up. Those types of art have been approved. Graffiti has not been approved. The artist just puts it up there as a statement or as a sign of this is where I am, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm thinking. Uh, so graffiti is not approved, which then means it is also an act of vandalism, which you can get in big trouble for. So these images I'm showing you are a combination of street art and graffiti. Can you tell which one is which? I'll give you some hints. Street art usually has images and it's like paintings or drawings. Graffiti typically has words in it and it has that specific style that I think if you know what I'm thinking of and you've probably have seen it, it's technically graffiti. Uh, street art, they usually have something to say and it's more imagery based to say a statement and then graffiti they also have something to say but again it's with words or it's in the act of creating art without permission that causes it to be a statement both street art and graffiti can be done with any material it can be spray paint moss paint markers this really cool water repellent spray and even yarn. Yes, I did say yarn. There is this whole movement happening in street art and graffiti that is called yarn bombing. It is when you or an artist takes yarn and wraps it or around any object or creates a crochet or a yarn or a, excuse me, knitted piece to wrap anything that's out on the street in yarn. Um, it's kind of cool and exciting because it's kind of newer. And yes, yarn gets wet because of the rain and weather. Yes, it gets gross because it's yarn and it's out getting wet in the weather. And yeah, artists will have to rewrap it if they want to keep that piece bright and colorful. Again, yarn bonding can either be street art or graffiti. It all depends if the artist has been approved to put their art there. I would like to know, what are your thoughts about yarn bombing? Would you do it? So there's a couple examples of how artists use what they make to change up a place. And I hope you found one of artists or at least one work of art that you really liked and you took really, really, really good notes so that you could be ready to share what you've learned to the rest of the class today or we ran out of time next class. Uh, so be ready, take a couple deep breaths. You got this.